Welcome to the AFNI video documentation. In this episode, we'll be looking at setting up your system to use AFNI. Hopefully you found the online documentation now. This is the main page and the first section describes installation and the background for every computer system. AFNI can be installed on Linux, Mac, and Windows. And for each flavor of Linux, there is a separate ins installation instruction. If you need to know what type of Linux you have, such as this computer is Linux, you can type the following command, lsb release minus a, and here I see that I'm using Ubuntu in version 1910. In fact, 1910 is not a long-term stable release and we don't have explicit setup instructions for it, but I set up my computer using the instructions for 1804 here and those worked well. If you notice, one of the first things that you'll be asked to know is what type of terminal shell do you have, bash or t-shell? And the way you can find this out is by typing echo $0 in the terminal. Um, many Linux commands are interpreted equally whether you're in bash or t-shell or another kind of shell. For example, ls will always show you the list of all the files in your given directory or pwd things like that the the fundamental commands where it matters whether you're using bash or t-shell is if you want to try to define a variable or um, an environment variable something like that in that case the syntax can be different between the shells and um, anyways for copying and pasting the instructions for the most part there are only a couple locations where you have to know that but it's good to remember that echo dollar zero will tell you your shell. If there's a minus in front of it, that doesn't really affect what shell you're using. It just means that that is your login shell. If you're using uh, Macintosh computers, nowadays some of those default to using Z shell, and uh, actually you can change that to be bash or T shell, which was probably what we would recommend. Okay, so let's assume that you've gone through the full setup instructions here. And if you notice, uh, one step for all the setup instructions is this evaluate system setup. So you can copy and paste this. And I ran that command in the shell. And here at the bottom, it gives me a few things to look at. So this first line is not actually something that I have to fix. This is just noting to me that I'm using bash as my shell, which we saw just a second ago. And many of the scripts that we distribute in AFNI are actually written in T-shell syntax. So this is just referring you to the fact that if you want to try to copy and paste or something or follow the syntax from a script, you just have to remember that those are in T-shell and my current shell is bash. If I want to change my shell uh, for a temporary change, I can just type T-shell. And now actually that is the shell that I'm using here. And I can exit out of that. Um, there is, in most of the setup instructions, there is a step where if, if you want to change your uh, shell to t-shell, that you can do that. Uh, the command, I believe, is change shell. But we'll, we'll just leave my shell as it is. This is not really something that has to be fixed. Uh, these next two things are actually recommendations as part of the setup that I should do. So this is something I can just copy and paste, actually. So in Linux terminals, to copy, I just need to highlight. And then to paste, I can use the middle mouse button, or if I'm on Windows subsystem Linux, I can actually use the right click. And I'll paste that. So I'm copying a file from my uh, AFNI directory to my home directory there. And there's also this command for me to run to set up a .suma rc file, okay? And what these RC files are, are what are called run command files. And these set a lot of defaults for the look and behavior of both AFNI and SUMA, of one of each of these commands respectively, that a lot of default choices that just kind of have to be made. And we'll look at tailoring those in a second. Okay, so now what I would wanna do is rerun my system check and I can just hit the up arrow and scroll back through my Linux commands. And this is the command I'd run a second ago. And I see a lot of success messages. And then the only thing that's here is just this notification now that I'm using bash instead of t-shell. So I don't have anything that I need to fix. 
there's a lot of information here if you're curious about the system setup, a lot of different programs that get checked. You can see what versions of R and Python are found on your system and things like that. If you do have a larger problem that you're not sure how to fix or what a summary message means, you can uh, send us a message on the message board. So here is the AFNI message board, what it currently looks like. And you can copy and paste the output of this terminal. Um, if you need to send something in by email or if you want to save this output to a text file, instead of just saying my check all, you can redirect it into a file called, uh, I'll call this grasshopper afni check.txt. Okay, so it ran the file, and if I list everything out, I'll list it in long time reversed order here. I can see that I, I do have this text file. If I want to see the contents of that text file, I can use any text editor on my computer to open it up. Uh, different computer systems will have different text editors. If you have AFNI installed, you can use AFNI open minus E to open up any file, and this will find a text editor on your computer, and now this is just something I could use. So it, I believe it found gedit on my system. So here is the text file that I output, or if I just want to display it, I can cat the file. And note that I'm also using the autocomplete on the terminal. I'm not typing the whole file name. I can type the first part of it and hit tab, and it will complete as much as it can uniquely, which is a nice Linux shortcut. Okay, and so here is the file, and I could, I could email this to someone if I needed help, or I could copy and paste from the file into the, uh, a new message on the message board. Okay, so let's assume now that the system check is, is all complete. Um, AFNI has over 600 programs, and each of the programs has anywhere from a few to dozens of help options. And... Uh, one, one thing you want to know is what, what are these options for a given program. So if I just type the name of an AFNI program, for example, 3D Volreg is one, then I'll see the help message put into the terminal here. And I could, if I want to, I can scroll back through and find something that I want. This is okay. Probably a, a more useful way to see the help message would be to open it up in a text editor. And this can be done by typing the name of the program with an option minus H view. Okay, and this will open up the same help file, but put it into a text editor here. And now if I open up a different one, in this case, I just have to see it. a new text editor won't open up, but a new subpage here. The behavior of, of how these text editors open up depend on what editor and what operating system you're using. But this is nice because now I can search through the help for what I wanted. Maybe I wanted uh, to see about the heptic option. And here I can find it and I can, I can search through it just as I would in a normal text editor. So I find this a much nicer way to look at the help messages for a given program. Something else to note is as, as we're typing out these program names and trying to enter the command line options, you can actually have the same kind of autocomplete and prompting for option names that you have for file names. So example, if I type 3D vol and hit tab, it'll complete volreg because there's no other uh, program at the moment on my computer that starts with 3D vol in a different way. Now I have my system set up where if I type the minus or the dash, and now I hit tab a couple times, it will show me a list of all the possible options here. So now if I were typing this out, I could say, ah, I wanted 3D Volreg minus 1D matrix save, and I can type as much of the option as I need to uniquely, and it will autocomplete. And then if there are some that, let's say I type minus C and hit tab, if I hit tab a couple more times, I'll be prompted for just that subset that starts with this root and all the possible continuations. So maybe I wanted minus cubic. Okay, so this is really nice to have your AFNI set up this way because you can both be prompted about your options and you can have the autocomplete feature on. If you don't have this behavior on your computer, then what you should do is run this following command. And running this will 
have a program in AFNI that parse all the help files of all the programs in AFNI, and it will store that information on your computer, and then it will know how to look up and get it later. So I'm going to run it now. It runs quite quickly on mine. You can see it went through all these, but because I had run it recently, I didn't actually need to rerun it. And for these changes to take effect, I just need to either open a new terminal and start using it there, or what's called source my .bashrc file. If you're using a different shell, you would be prompted to source a different .rc file. Okay, and now again, you should just double check that something like uh, 3D Volreg and you hit tab or any AFNI program, if you hit the tab a couple times after a minus, you're prompted for these options. Okay, that's enough for the setup now, and we'll pause here.